Rita here, welcome back to Gooseberry Homestead. So, let's take a look and see what I ended up doing with all of my plants. The joy about having plants in containers, you guys, is so that you can move them if need be. And I still don't know if I found the happy spot for them. When things change in your around your homestead, whether you're renting and you are um, container pot growing for your homestead growing and learning and that sort of thing. Right now, I'm just putting into practice my homesteading skills. On the low scale, you guys, I'm just, for the most part, container gardening. Um, I am attempting to do some in-ground growing this year, but that's also proving to be quite a bit of a challenge based on certain situations. So, we're looking over here. I've got like the roses and a couple gooseberries right here. I've had to move all of my plants away from the edge of the fence line here, all the way down, because our new neighbor's dog um, is creating a dust path along the fence line. You can kind of see it now, already beginning. Ends about right here, for the most part. And then goes all the way down to the end, and I'll show you guys. But he's creating a dust path, and he kicks up the dust and I've got like dust and stuff right in here now um, from where he's kicked it up um, and um, it was getting all over my leaves of all of my plants and my plants need to be able to um, you know do the soda, uh, photosynthesis and all that kind of stuff you guys so that they can grow properly and so I've ha I had to wash my leaves off a bunch of stuff I actually lost some flowers I was starting to grow and um, and they were for my husband because they were his favorite. He really loves morning glories, so I was trying to grow those for him this year. And those proved to be a fail because they got peed on. And I know it's not my dog's urine because my dog's pee doesn't smell like that. So, um, and like I said in the last video, you probably don't want to know how I know what my dog's pee smells like. But, you know, you kind of generally can tell. Um, and so my dog has a, a specific smell. So um, this one was a completely different smell. So anyways, I've had to move all of my plants all the way down along the fence line. I've had to move them com completely away from the fence line. I had just moved them over to this side about two months ago. And now I've had to move everything again because um, it just it just wasn't going to work. Um, and that's what you just have to go with the flow, you guys, whenever you're gardening. Um, especially if you're renters and or if you even own something. You can't control what an animal is going to do. And you have to be kind and sometimes you just have to move things so it's it's gonna work out just fine so I'll show you some other things I ended up doing as well so the roses over here and they are smelling amazing I've got a couple buds right here this is the Adobe sunrise or something like that Adobe I think it's Adobe sunrise um, rose and it's doing great it's putting on new um, growth which is really exciting to see here's the other one that I had gotten from Canyon Road and it has a red colored blossom is what it's supposed to have but we've got new growth a lot of new growth only took like a week or so you guys it's already putting on new growth so if you guys can see that all this is all all brand new growth so I trimmed it back to healthy point points or <laughs> areas and so that's how it's looking I did the same thing with these roses right here these little miniature ones focus that up for you guys and so we've got blossoms on them too. I don't know how good those blossoms are going to be because these blossoms were on the rose bushes when um, I got them from the store and they were in dire straits. But there's more than one bush in each one of these. So it's kind of like densely packed in. Because you want to think about when you get these for like Mother's Day and that's what I believe these were for were Mother's Day gifts. Um to make them look more full when they're small bushes like this they'll com combine a whole bunch of roses all together so we'll see how these all turn out and how they end up looking in the long run um we'll also see if they have a good fragrant smell to them but they're nice and small and compact and this is great all right so my bulbs are looking they're dying back and stuff so i'll be wanting to replant these or repot these and put some different flowers into these containers in the near future We'll see. They seem to do really well in this container, but we'll see. Let's move on. So my herbs and my strawberries are looking pretty good. I only have a few herbs now left on the fence line. 
and the rest are my strawberries are in all of the pink pots and then I have some herbs and some vegetables growing in the greeny the bluish green pots or turquoise whatever color you want to call them so this is Bernat and I will probably be moving these into another container as well and um, like one of the little round ones if I have one of the round um, gray pots I will I'll probably be putting these into that all right, so I planted the rest of the uh, Pharisees strawberries yesterday into this one. And in the center of the pot, you guys, I planted some vegetables. Um, the vegetables will be coming out after the season's over, so that's all good and dandy. But we got some kohlrabi here. And I think I've got three or four uh, white kohlrabis growing in here. So it looks like possibly four. And I think there's some beets or something in here too. So those probably won't do so so great. I think the kohlrabi grows above the ground and the beets grow under it. So that's kind of the reason why I planted them that way in these little pots, these little planters. Okay, so I transplanted all of the, um, the plants that were in the back, in the back garden. I had to transplant them also. I've got cucumbers up here on the, um, not cucumbers, these ones on this side are going to be the um, summer squashes. Um, so zucchinis and that sort of thing so I planted them up here but as you can see I didn't get all the dust off of the leaves and it's really crucial for your plants that you're growing not to have dust and dirt all over the leaves because as you can see the leaf is all wilted and that is because of um, it not being able to photosynthesize and not be able to get um, it can basically is like the way a plant breathes and so all the dirt's on there so I'll probably give these a good spray again this evening some of the leaves are a lot better than others like see how crisp these ones are nice and firm but we already have blossoms beginning down here so I put them up here so these the fence will act kind of like a trellis and I'll try to train them around I got I highly planted them I highly densely planted them in here I've got about anywhere between five to seven plants in each one of these little containers back here I got purple kohlrabi and again I think some beets and some other odds and ends in this one um, but I've kind of pretty much gone away from taking I took pretty much all my herbs out of these containers on the fence line and freed them up for like so I can like sow like small carrots and um, radishes and and different things like that is what I'm thinking you guys so right here, um, another item that's going to be going away out of this pot will eventually will be these tribes, and I'll be putting them into their own container. Either one of those gray ones or one of the pink ones. Um, I'm leaning more towards the gray, so um, we'll see where the Bernat ends up. So um, I do need to take out the Swiss chard um, because I'm moving those into a pink pot, and it's kind of like my salads and stuff like that. So this is kind of in the salad family. So I'm going to be moving those into the salad bowls. And I just need to drill those holes in there now. Okay, so here's one that I have pretty well, um, highly densely planted. I don't know, I don't really want to take these ones out of here. This is like arugula. And um, even though it would be good to have it in like say the salad pot, um, I'm gonna see how well they do here in this part of the yard. And if they don't do very well, if they don't grow very well, I'll probably end up moving these into say one of those salad bowls so we'll see I may end up changing my mind but I'll let you guys know um, in a video of course um, what I end up doing all right so moving on we've got more strawberries here oh I forgot to tell you guys what strawberries I had over here so these ones are um, I've got Lauren's in the corner and in the center and in the corner right here and then these ones are supposed to be pine berries the little ones on e either side so I'm thinking about putting pine berries in this one with the Laurens and then some a, a couple red berries and making that a pine berry box basically. So I'll have like little pine berries growing. Okay, so we did this one. Now this one um, is, um, I got some a chunk of dirt here, I gotta. <laughs> All right, so we got strawberries here, this is great. I did have on um, this one, I did have the um, Swiss chard in the back. I've already removed it. I just have to fix the pot put holes in the bottom of the pot and then add a little bit more dirt and re reposition it but I didn't want the roots to dry out on the um, Swiss chard so I just kind of like stuffed it in some dirt that was wet yesterday so that way um, they stay good so but yeah we've got strawberries that are ripening on here and I've already taken one off and eaten it they're pretty yummy 
um, this time of year I tend to just kind of eat as I as they come on and so I just love being able to eat strawberries fresh from the garden it's really excellent all right and these ones are the Parisians um, I've had these ones for a few years now um, they're a really great strawberry I believe the Parisian has the pink blossoms so yeah I'm liking those I think it I think the Parisian is the one is one that I got from as a runner from the store and so um, yeah so anyways get the dirt off of there I got chunks of dirt up on here oh man all right so I've also repositioned my other plants because I don't know how smart their dog is really great and everything but he might nibble on stuff because he's kind of well he's eight years old but just to be on the safe side I moved my poisonous bushes like my elderberries away from the fence line because I don't want their dog to get poisoned and he ate something yesterday and was vomiting so I don't know I don't think that he did because my elderberries were away from the edge of the fence a little bit um, I don't believe any of the leaves were going through the fence but you just never know um, every dog's different and what they do is different so you know you just go with the flow you guys so anyway so I repositioned my blueberries and I mowed and the grass was um, all the way up to the bottom of the chairs so it was time so and then I just hand weeded along because the weed eater would actually tear up the plastic so I just ripped all of the soil or the the grass out with my hands um, but I've got my sharp blue blueberry my pink lemonade it's looking good I did have to move my lemon verbena because it smelled like urine like dog pee really bad and so um, I'm gonna let that heal over there now I definitely didn't want that to die because I love my lemon verbena so I moved that I've got my Russian um, olive tree here uh, rush yeah Russian olive yeah so that's there I've got the pine berries here and um, it's finally getting to the area where I can actually start identifying which ones are the red berries and which ones are the pine berries and I do have some ripe ones so today I should come out here and label a couple of these um, that I know for sure are going to be the pine berries and I see one right here you guys it looks ready that's a nice little pine berry and so it's pretty much ready I've got a couple that are soft so how the elderberry is looking I've lost a lot of the um, berries off of these so the berries are going to be hit and miss you guys this year um, not doing so good with um, some of the berries in the garden this year but I do have a few forming on here which is good but something happened this year and I lost all the gooseberries that which weren't very many but I also um, yeah some of the stuff's just not doing as great as last year but th that happens you guys so all right so here is some more of the zucchinis now I believe all the zucchinis um, from this portion all the way down that I've planted these ones these zucchinis are the ones that are um, I think there's there's a stripe on the zucchini so yeah but we have little blossoms all over you guys all over these so um, they're they're ready to start making food so I had to reposition them before the flowers opened and now the kind of roots have to settle back in and all that so all this moving them and everything is kind of stunting their growth but I moved them over here so now they can either train up or train down I don't know how how they grow um, I haven't really grown zucchini a whole lot so but I do have that velcro tape so I can tape them up to the fence to trail them up so they're not down here where they're all the dust is getting created but yeah you can kind of see like there was a lot of dust along over in here and stuff so yeah I just had to move the plants it just it's all all around better situation um, I do have um, uh, the crows keep coming and messing with my planters you guys digging holes and breaking plants and things I got my crabby down here and my crabby is finally starting to um, grow um, they kind of like put on their growth right in here and you'll see like these little stems off of them in the stores like the little the little leaf areas and they cut those off generally um, so I'm excited about that we'll see if the beets even grow um, looks like I need to do a little bit of trimming I've got a little tiny 
thing on my strawberry trying to make babies. Um, these ones haven't really made any fruit yet. These ones I grew from seed last year. And these, and so yeah, so these ones are the frescas and they do have a white flower. So, and we'll see what these ones end up doing. They ended up making two of the, um, and these were from, yeah, this one split off and made two, two plants. So that's interesting. And the leaves are a little different on this one than from these. At least they, they, they were looking different. Now they're kind of looking a little bit the same. But they're a little bit bigger. And I'm wondering if this one is actually the one that came out that had the double. Um, oh, what do you call them? The double. Uh, I had like one last year that when they came up from seed, they were like a double, a double leaf or something like that. So, um, yeah. So I'm thinking this might be it because this one is so much bigger than the rest. The, at least the leaf. Alright, so my phone's being weird. So anyway, so this was like the double leaf. Anyways, that's what I'm thinking because it's so much bigger. So my phone had just uh, shut off. And I don't know why. So that was just really odd. So anyways, the Krabi's doing good and then the zucchinis. And then these zucchinis from here over to here are the smaller rounder zucchinis. We also have lots of blossoms on those two getting ready to open up. Got Krabi planted. And I got another strawberry bin right here. This is my um, bubbleberry. A lot, I just harvested a whole bunch yesterday and I ate them. So they didn't even make it into the house. But um, I am suspecting the next group of flowers will be a lot better. Um, and berries will be a lot better because um, these ones, um, I transplanted them when the berries had already for were forming. And it really shocked the plants when I did that. So, you guys, um, now I've got all these new babies, and i am still got some putting off more babies. So, this one got pulled up out of the dirt. Uh, so, um, that's what the, those little monkeys, the, the uh, crows uh, come and mess with everything. So, anyway, so now I've got these little baby ones coming up here, and I'm going to fill this entire pot full of strawberries. So, those ones are going to be the bubble berries. And um, coming over here, and they're a little bit smaller strawberry, but the flavor is really good. So here we've got some kohlrabi, just a little bit. These ones aren't growing quite as big as the other ones. I feel like I need to push that down in there just a little bit more. There we go. It was getting kind of leggy with the the root hanging out. I had I think this one was one that the um, crows had messed with. So what I'm going to do with all of these zucchinis is I'm going to come through them and trim off all the leaves that are in the front section, you guys. That way they don't shade out these vegetables that I'm growing in the front section of the um, planter. And so those are going to look really good um, in the long run. Okay, so here I've got white kohlrabi um, and these are growing okay. And then I've got some, I've got celery root here and there tucked in. Um, so whatever the, whatever the stinking crows didn't get. So let's go back here really quick. So as you can see, I've moved everything, um, out of here. All the leaves were getting dusty back here from the dog. And so he's really created a mountain over here. He's got his little runway. He's even dug up roots and stuff just by the constant running back and forth. So it looks like, um, I'll be starting my plants about right here. And then planting over so this whole section will be peppers and um, uh, tomatoes and that sort of thing you guys and um, and then I've got a shaded area here I'm not exactly sure what to plant in the shaded area this area pretty much says shaded the entire time this really wasn't the best place to put the garden but I don't have a lot of room with kids and pets and things where do I put stuff it's really difficult so yeah so I'm going to probably end up um, just planting back here this year. Next year I won't plant back here. Um, I'm just going to pull up the shade cloth, clean it off the best I can, and, um, and we'll go from there. Because, um, yeah, I was hoping this was going to work out, but it's just not. It's just not. So um, I'll just do container gardening while we're renting. I, I've try, I'm trying to do the in the ground stuff, but yeah, I'm just going to have to stick with container garden and garden on the small scale and just have just a little bit of tomatoes and not try to grow like a ton of food. 
it just is what it is so okay so moving on so I'll have a few tomatoes but I'm gonna have so much extra comfrey is looking big we got stock longer stocks coming up so that's cool but I've got comfrey coming up in other pots and stuff so yeah you guys all right, so I moved the other two blueberries on this side. So I've got two blueberries on the front of the greenhouse, two blueberries on the back, and then I put my Crandall currant in the middle, and then my elderberries on either side. I've also stuck rocks in a lot of the pots to help anchor them down because when the wind comes through, they like to blow my um, my trees and bushes over that have like big old leaves. Like they act like cells, and then they'll just knock them over. So it looks like I just need to put a big old stone in each one of these and they're good to go. But yeah, I had to wash all the leaves off of um, off of here and that sort of thing. But my elderberry is um, the plants that are up along the greenhouse. They're not going to get too dusty, so I'm not worried about that so much. So everything's looking good. Um, I do. I did put a couple things back into the greenhouse. But I've planted all of the zucchinis that were in here out. And then my tomatoes, I've got tomatoes in here, some tomatoes, rhubarb, um, which uh, it's a St. Victoria rhubarb. And then I've got some of my other ones. I'm going to put these into a bigger pot. I'm going to put them in the greenhouse, you guys, and grow them right here in the greenhouse on the floor. And um, that way they can get bigger because um, it's getting warmer. But this is the most fruit I've ever seen on these plants since I've had them the last three years and I overwinter these on my windowsill every year and so they're doing excellent and then I got my bronze fennel and here's that um, Swiss chard down here and then I've just got some random things some lemon verbena coming up over there these ones will be the ones for sale this year and so that's how they're looking okay coming over here let's see where do I go okay let's look at these ones so here's a bunch of my I've got some apple trees here. Um, this is a citrus right here. This is um, my honey tangerine. It's looking good. Um, I got little plants tucked in. Like, I'm wanting to say that's um, my pineapple sage. And then I got some red goji berries here. Jackfruit. <laughs> All right, you guys. So apparently I ran out of space on my phone. So pick up where I left off. So this one in here is a pink grapefruit and my Roses of Sharon. And these ones are the dead, um, the dead flowers that were for my husband. So those are the morning glories. And there was another variety in there too. Um, I'm pretty sure they're gone. So, so now that all the green leaves are completely dead. So those are goners. That's a waste of like $4. And seeds so that sucks okay so over here are some more squashes I need to go plant these out I'm not sure which kind they are I've got um, some celery root that's looking really nice here and so that's really awesome and encouraging and then I planted some herbs in this but nothing has come up um, I don't know what or not. this fly has been stuck to the <laughs> been stuck in there. I keep seeing him in there. I don't know. He's probably at the top of one of my other ones here now. All right, and here is the elf mirror, which I've not seen these seeds in the U.S. These are um, uh, the German word is Elfenspiegel, and um, so they look very much like a snapdragon kind of. So here's a bud right there. We'll get it to focus. And then the flowers, um, they come in different kinds of colors. This one just happens to be a really beautiful orange color. And uh, so, and some of them you'll see a little bit more purple on them and that sort of thing. But they look like, they, they're supposed to look like little elf faces or whatever. But I just think they look like beautiful flowers. Alright, and then I've got some pumpkins down here. The little sweetie pie ones for making pumpkin pies. So I'm going to get those planted in the garden. And then here... Our, my spinach has gone to seed. I didn't get any good spinach and then I got some comfrey. Of course, it's coming up everywhere in all my pots. Then here is my um, echinacea. This is the question mark plant. This came in with my, um, my lemongrass and I have no clue what this is. So I'm letting it grow. It's actually kind of a really pretty um, plant. I just don't know what it is. 
and then these are some apple trees and then there's um, a strawberry they keep coming and dying they come up and die and so we'll just have to wait and see how all that goes then under here you guys are the black goji berries coming up and then I've got some germination finally on the I can't remember what it's called I'm wanting to say aronia um, but I could be saying it incorrectly but there's something on this far left right here that's growing and they are coming up finally and so I've moved them over here because the greenhouse was too hot for them and this is a perfect spot for them to germinate so they're coming up and they're looking good all right so I've got lots of extra um, uh, tomatoes over here I'll probably planting out the bigger ones and um, probably I'll just be giving away a lot of these um, little plants like this so everything's looking pretty good here and then I've got some plants right here that are for sale locally and then I've got my red onions and my green onions growing in here and then the fake garlics in the middle <laughs> I'm still laughing about that but we got seed pods on them now on the fake garlic that is and then I've got the red and red onions and the green onions so red is in the middle and then green and then the leeks never came up at all so I don't know what to say about that you can see where the um, crows have been out here digging up my pots they got dirt they pulled them out of the cells little tink stinkers <laughs> little tinkers <laughs> all right and then uh, coming over here we've got um, right here let's see oh you guys look it I didn't see this before but looks like I've got um a sweet potato or something coming up here so I planted um, a sweet potato down in here let's kind of like just like dig out a little bit and see which one it's coming from I think it's coming from it's coming from the one I got at the store the um, not the seed packets um, this is from a um, an Asian uh, sweet potato so it's uh, got the purple skin and then the white flesh that one so that's cool so that's coming up so I'll need to be adding more dirt to that yay I'm so excited okay so I'm growing sweet potatoes in here now here's my celery cutting celery has gone to seed and um, I'm gonna let it seed itself it's really pretty it's looking really good this has been growing for two and a half almost three years I'm wanting to say and it's finally gone to seed so I'm letting it I'm just gonna let it do its thing the curly willow is looking big and strong and in charge. Um, here are the little gooseberries that I have potted up. I'll be moving all the gooseberries now into a larger containers. Um, and um, that way it, they don't dry out quite as quickly. So that's what I'll be doing here soon. Um, I just need to uh, figure out how many pots I need and um, try to do it on a on a, a low budget kind of way because I gotta figure things out all right so here are some more gooseberries in here we got something coming up here next to where the gooseberries planted um, I don't know if that's a gooseberry those can be gooseberries I don't know we'll just watch it it's coming up where the gooseberry was so it's possible <laughs> that's a gooseberry I got some elephant spiegel here right here but this does not look like an elfish beagle but it could possibly be um, and then but yeah this one looks like it's gonna be a lighter colored flower it's kind of white maybe a yellow color I can't wait to see what this one's gonna be and then there's some little elfish beagles down in here some little plants so we'll just keep an eye on them they're 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 growing but they're not growing very good um, some of them better than others clearly but we'll just keep an eye on them all the snapdragons that I sowed those ones all died I got more comfrey <laughs> and then a lot of things have gone seed um, my uh, miners lettuce has gone to seed here we got some flowers so I don't mind if they seed into the ground here that's fine with me I don't care it's not my land um, and then I've got a lot of things that have gone to seed here arugulas and wild must and mustards these ones are nice and spicy um, this one's a tender green. I prefer the spicy over the more mild flavored mustard. So, but I let it go to seed. Um, the mustard never got big enough for me to really eat. None of them did. So, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So, we'll just, we'll just go with it and go with the flow. 
All right, so I do have about five nectarines growing on my nectarine tree. It's supposed to be cling free stone, so um, I, I'm liking that, and it's self fertile tree. Um, so I do have five this year. The frost got a lot of the blossoms, and that's okay. And I've cut all, cut back to all the healthy parts of the tree. I had it cut way back on the frost peach, you guys, like majorly. But I think in the long run, it's actually going to be better for the tree to cut back. So we'll see what if, if any more growth happens. If no more growth happens on parts of the tree, I'm going to cut it back even more, depending on. Um, because I want to cut it back to the very most healthy parts to promote growth in those areas rather than it putting growth into extra areas that aren't needed. So I've had to move a lot of things. So on this side, we're going to start here. I've got just random like pot herbs and I've got spots for pumpkins inside of some of these and or tomatoes or peppers probably. Um, so I'll decide later as to where's what's going where. Um, I do need to put my um, olive herb into another container as well. Um, moving on down here. So I've got a variety of things. I've got pear trees and all kinds of things. Some lemon verbena. Um, my other flowers, hydrangea, lilac. Um, I got cherry trees and random trees. And look at this arugula, you guys. I just wanted to show you this. This is the best arugula I've got going in my garden. This thing is crazy awesome. Um, so I want most of my arugula to do what that's doing. And that has an excellent flavor. Nice bite to it. I like the spicy um, arugula, arugulas um, more than the mild. So that's just me. I like flavor, you guys. So my mountain ash is doing amazing. I have to actually step back just so you guys can see it more. It's taller than me. It's close to maybe six foot four, six foot five now. Uh, I don't want it to get too much taller. Um, and uh, that way when we go to move, it's not like, I don't want it to get more than, I don't want it to get over um, seven feet tall because then it'll be too tall for the moving truck. I just don't want that <laughs> to occur. So I'll have to keep my, my trees trimmed back, but I will wait until we get ready to leave and then I'll trim up to where I can't reach. So everything's looking good. My salad bowls are here now. I just need to drill holes so I can redistribute. All right, so this is going to be kind of a long video today, so hopefully I didn't say let me make a quick video at the beginning because it's kind of getting long. But um, I've got some random, these onions down here are not doing good. I need to plant stuff over here that it does good in the shade. But right now, that's what I have over here. And up until about this point and things start growing. So um, I've got some squashes planted in here. <laughs> well, okay, where was I? Um, so apparently I need to make sure I delete the videos after I remove them from the phone so that I have the space to keep recording. So anyways, this will be like four videos spliced together, you guys. So anyways, <laughs> like I said, I'm not guaranteeing this is a short video. So just enjoy it. So anyways, so yeah, so I've got random pumpkins and um, squashes and cucumbers planted along here. I've got, um... I'm not exactly sure. I think I can't remember what these were I planted, but look how amazing they look. So regardless of what it is, you guys, I'm going to have some pumpkins. I've got some beans that are trying to grow, but I've had a lot of pests come and kill them. So the beans were not really a very great thing for me to grow this year. It's been kind of a rough year and I am a little discouraged, but at the same time I'm not because I just, I understand that there's some years that things do better. So I'm not like fully discouraged. I'm just like, ugh, you know, frustrated. So yeah, but it's okay. So I've got onions planted in here. Now my friend gave me all these onions, so I planted them. So that's cool. I really love that. So, um, but yeah, I've got more of my cucumber munchers are right here. Okay, so these are cucumbers. These are random um, other squashes. Those other squashes, the extra squashes I'm finding in my garden, I'll probably plant those over here. I don't know what they are and then I've got um, here I got some more um, like zucchinis and and things like that right here so the other ones are more like uh, squash squashes you guys so um, mo or they could be zucchinis or they could be cucumbers I don't know because remember there was a lot of things that just got messed up when my greenhouse flipped over I do need to get the comfrey out of here and transplant them into a container 
Um, the comfrey tends to spread pretty quickly, so while I've got it growing over here next to the shed right there, right there, um, it, it does tend to spread. So if it gets in your soil, the roots, it'll come back from the roots really easy. So you have to get all the roots. So it can be pretty invasive and does take over an area. So I will be getting this up out of the ground. This one's doing really good in this spot, actually better than the others. And those were the main plants or over there by the shed. So these ones are doing really good and a little bit, uh, it gets partial shade because of this lattice on the fence here. And so I've got right here, I've got a, um, what is it? Eggplant, it's a mini eggplant. So I've got one of those growing there. I'm gonna probably put the rest into some a, a, a container or something, probably one of the salad bowls or something like that. And then I'll figure out where I'm gonna put all the, the peppers. I might put some peppers in the, in the garden too. So we'll see, I might have a couple peppers in containers and the rest in the garden. And then here I've got some of the black or the brown cherry tomatoes down here and that onion is looking huge. And then I did, again, you guys, I had that chehote um, melon planted in here. We'll see if it grows. Um, I've heard you're supposed to plant the whole thing. And then, guess what? The birds dug it up, or pests, or something dug it up and ate part of it, but they didn't eat the seed. So I reburied it, planted, put more dirt on top. So we'll see if it comes up. I had to move my tomatoes. So my tomatoes are up here against this area here because they kept falling over from the wind and because the bottoms of the the pots are rounded and now they have a whole bunch of container or uh, more um tomato plants at walmart now but they're in like a hexagon style pot so they're less likely to fall over um so i've got these two okay that's fine i'll grow peppers in them next year um like jalapenos and bell peppers or something like that but i'm gonna grow on the downscale next year i'm probably only gonna have like i'm probably only gonna plant like maybe 10 of each item just to see, give every plant a chance because um, by the time everything grows and everything, you might lose some. So it's always good to plant a few extra and that kind of tended to be the thing this year. I lost a lot of my seeds to um, vermin and birds and bugs and all kinds of stuff. So I ended up having just enough actually. And I sowed hundreds of seeds, like so many that I could have sold extra food you know, or extra plants for food. And yeah, the bugs and the, the vermin got to a lot of it. So that's why it's good to sow a lot of seeds. So anyways, but yeah, these are doing good, but I used the Velcro um, garden tape and I strap, I clicked it to, the, you know, wrapped it around the, the fence here because the um, they kept falling over. Now they're not gonna fall over. So they're doing good. So if any tomatoes go through the fence, I'm gonna let my neighbors have them or their dog might eat them because <laughs> Cujo likes to eat the vegetables that poke through the fence. So um, down here, I've got the, the acorn squashes or the carnival squash that I had planted out in the back garden. They were in the corner, that corner that looked like a little square where I had them all planted. So I planted the majority of them here and I planted some more over here, but I've got two watermelon plants. So I've got one here, so small watermelons, and one here. So these ones have a, a shorter time to grow, and since we have such a short growing season here where I'm at, um, that works. Now, I harvested the majority of the garlic out of here. What you see there is mostly onions now, and so, um, yeah, so I ended up, oh goodness, the dogs are gonna go at it now. Um, let me try to finish this up. So, um, the, um, so I got, I harvested the Chinese pink garlic and that's curing now. And I love the flavor of this year. So I will be planting that again. It grows really big garlic cloves. And so I'm going to try growing it in a little deeper pot. Um, you know, I might be able to get it with planting them in, into these containers next year, actually. And then I could plant the peppers in between them. That actually might work out really good, you guys. Thanks for um, coming along with me on that thought process. So that's what I might do. I might do that. I might plant those in those. So that'd be good. Then the music is still a really good favorite of mine. 
Um, but fresh eating, I liked the Chinese pink over the music, believe it or not. They, it had a better flavor this year. So I don't know what happened. Um, but yeah, so I've got more garlic here. I believe this is the Bavarian. Let's see. Bavarian purple. These ones are doing really, really good this year too. So I'm really excited about that. And then all of my um, curly um, parsley has gone to seed. We're letting it do that this year. And then I've got more of the carnival squash over here with some of the onions growing around it. And I think there's some music, uh, some garlic in there too. But the garlic is not very big in the music this year. So we'll see you guys how all of that pans out. Let's check out this side. Okay, so we've kind of already looked at all the, all the, the trees. The trees are all looking really good. I don't really need to talk a whole lot about that. Um, uh, so let's see here we'll go down this way and then come back up next along the house and do the berries last okay so over here I've got my artichokes and then that apricot tree or plum tree that I cut off um, it may still come back from the roots who knows um, if it does great if it doesn't no big deal um, because I've already got so many trees it's not that a, it's not a big deal so um, so this has kind of become my artichoke pot, and I do have a purple artichoke now right there, and the rest of them are green globes. Um, I was not able to get my purple artichoke seeds to germinate, so there's that. I've moved all the gooseberries over here too, along here. So these are the other two variety that I have, the giant gooseberries. And then I have these ones over here, and it does look like I have some breakage. Yep, I'm gonna have to pop those off, these broke. So I'm glad I've seen that now so I can get them in the ground and root them. Um, I do have another one that I have rooting in another container over along the fence line. So maybe I'll pop these into the same pot because I don't have a lot of strawberries on that um, in that pot yet. I think it's the pot with um, the chives. And these will only be in there for a short period of time anyways. So they can share the pot that has some of the strawberries. Okay, so I'm glad I saw that. So I'll come back and get those here in a little bit. But they're still kind of connected to the gooseberries, so the, that's why the leaves have not wilted. So, yeah. But with this cold weather, I keep finding yellow leaves on my apple trees, you guys. And so, um, it just keeps thinking it's fall. So, I keep finding all these little yellow leaves because the weather has been so weird this year. So, I just find the leaves and I pick them off. You know, because I'm not ready to see the yellow leaves yet. <laughs> it's way too early. All right, so I've got a lot of good growth on a lot of my trees and that sort of thing. Um, the olive herb is going to get moved out of this pot. That way it frees up root space for the apple tree. But clearly the apple tree is growing taller. So clearly the growth for this is not being stunted in any way. So it's almost the same height as me. So I've got a little yellow cherry tomato here. I got some lettuce growing. Um, I've a couple of the lettuces died back, so I accidentally picked one. It looks like my um, red um, romaine is coming back from the the base. This one it looks like I might have cut a little bit too far down, so I'll just keep that in mind when I cut the rest of them off to make salad or whatever that I leave it so that it can come back. So I hope that happens. Um, so I've been harvesting on the lettuce for the last couple months whenever we have like taco night or whatever um, I do want to eat more salads, but I just I Need to grow more lettuce to, in order to justify eating more salad So these are just a couple in here and that's great and all but I really honestly I need I need more lettuce in order to justify making large salads because if I eat salad every single day then these would be completely gone and I would have to wait weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. So yeah, that's how it's looking. My kale is doing really good. Here's the babies that I grew from seed here and here and they look good. And then my my dinosaur kale is here. So I put those in the center so when the romaine is gone, I still have some kale growing in here. And these should do okay if I just move them up under the house for the winter. They should overwinter just fine. My cilantro is bolted and gone to seed and I'm gonna let it do it because I love cilantro seeds I love to cook with them I love to throw them in my dinner in, you know in my meals and that sort of thing so I've got herbs and stuff my 
purple sage, variegated sage is over here, tucked in right there. My common sage, whorehound, mints, um, and then random things growing. And the rest of these are gooseberries. Here is the um, kohlrabi and beets. I think they might actually do better in this section of the yard because they're getting a little more sun. And so I can keep a little better eye on them. So we got beets and we've got kohlrabi. I cannot wait, you guys. I think next year what I'll do is I'll probably grow kohlrabi in only two containers. And then I'll grow the kohlrabi and the beets together. And then I'll do um, the celery root and another variety that grows up top, like maybe Romanesco or something like that in another one. But um, so we'll see. We'll see. All right, so more herbs. Here's the purple, um, the silver lemon, um, variegated lemon. It's gone to seed, you guys. We got some pretty, pretty purple blossoms at the top. So you guys can see that. How beautiful is that? So I'm excited about that. I'm let it go to seed. And because um, it was already doing it, so I'm just gonna let it do it. And then I'll cut the flowers off and, and that sort of thing. It really doesn't mess with the flavor, in my opinion too much so I've got um, in this one I've got rosemary planted with some kohlrabi this is the lemon on cedar it's looking amazing so now let's go back around to the um, we'll look at the plants really quick that I have that are gonna go in the plant cell and I'll show you the growth on all of them so the sage is looking huge you guys it's looking really big I've got planters knocked over so I've got stinging nettles here, and I got sage. It's doing really good. I've got mint. Looks like I've got a little bit of mint that's trying to die on me over here. It looks like it needs water. So I need to water those, bring those back. Okay, so those for the most part are looking good. I'll just go get my water can and I'll water those. Um, and so this is curly willows that are growing right here. And they're actually doing pretty good in the little containers. So, and then over here, I've got Salad Burnett. They're doing really good. They actually look better than the ones I have in my planter, by the way, you guys. Just letting you know. <laughs> Same with the English, or with the, um, this is German Thyme. So, same with the German Thyme. It looks way better in here than it does in my containers. <laughs> I might swap them out. I'm <laughs> just saying. Um, okay, and look at, look at how big the, um, a St. John Wart's looking. It's getting good and big. And then I got more rosemary down here. Some more, more comfrey, you guys. Like I said, it's, I've been pulling it out and poking it in pots everywhere. Um, and then some of the golden berries that'll be for sale. And then here is my blackberries, boysenberry, white blackberry from Baker Creek. I need to make a little label for it. Um, Snowbank is what it's called. Um, and then this is my double gold, possibly, possibly, I don't know. It came back from the roots, but it's definitely a raspberry. So if it puts on berries this fall, I'll know that it's the double gold because it's an ever bearing. Here is the tulamine. I've got berries on it forming. Cascade Delight, berries forming on that. The one that's quite a questionable um, orange berry, that's what I traded for. So we'll see if these actually are orange or not this year. And we got berries grow on there too. This is the one I rescued from Walmart. And it's getting taller and bigger already. And we got berries formed on here. It's supposed to be a Logan black, thornless blackberry, or black raspberry, I mean. The container had a wrapper that said blackberry on it, but it's actually a raspberry, you guys. So there was a lot of mixed um, cells tactics on this particular plant at the store. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a, supposed to be a raspberry so if it comes off as a cone um, and leaves part of the stem on then you'll know for sure that it's the raspberry because the blackberries all come off and the stems still stuck to the berries seeds and that sort of thing and here's another one that came with the ladies um, uh, the one that was next to the ones that are supposed to be orange raspberries they were in two pots right next to each other but these ones have a different color um, stock down at the bottom and um, I've it's loaded with berries um, for it being as big as it is this year so I'm excited so I can't wait to see if these are gonna be black or if they're gonna be orange or if they're gonna be red who knows well we may get surprised 
so that's pretty much it you guys um this is a super long video today i'm gonna have to splice a bunch of videos together um so you guys can kind of see what i've done again everything's in containers here in my garden you guys i tend to move everything around quite a bit um and this actually is going to work out pretty good because everything's kind of together but it makes it a little bit um hard to make you know these kind of videos because it um it just seems like a lot in one spot so what i might have to do in the future is like do individual videos from now on and and then do walk around so you guys can see everything without a whole lot of talking about each individual item as i'm doing the walk around and um and do the tours that way with you guys so um everything's looking pretty good for the most part I do need to water a couple items um that was up against the fence over there um but it's not like a huge loss um that's okay um but yeah so you guys can see how everything's growing i'll probably move the wire racks that have the salad bowls on them um into like a cute configuration or something like that i'm thinking i might move them onto this side of the um this this area I might even move these onto this side I kind of want to protect my um, my berry bushes and stuff like that but I don't know maybe I'll just leave it the way it is I kind of like having this little open area right here next to the trampoline and the chairs I don't know why the chairs are circling it like it's a fire pit but they are um, I think I sit down and put my feet up and then the dog likes to sit next to me and but anyways <laughs> So anyways, you guys, um, comment, like, and subscribe, <laughs> click that bell button, and um, I'll try to make some shorter videos for you guys, um, just queuing in on like individual items. Let me know if there's anything specifically that you want to see in my garden um, that I may not have covered, or if you want me to just um, maybe just show individual items, which I might just do. So um, kind of like spotlight a different plant every day or something like that. So anyways, you guys. I already said my my um, outro, so um, I'll see y'all guys in another video, and um, have a wonderful day, you guys, and God bless. Bye.